Hello and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can map a nested JSON structure to a flat model in the Swift language. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need, obviously, is some sort of a JSON structure. Now, instead of making a request to the server, I already have a JSON structure that I'm just going to copy it over here so that you have an idea of what's going on. So you can see that we have a JSON structure. It's a dictionary which contains ID, name, username, email. But this is where it gets a little bit complicated because address itself is another dictionary. So this is the nested JSON structure that we have. All right. So what we want is that this is a nested JSON structure. We want it to map to our user structure or a user class but it doesn't have any nesting in the class. So the first thing we need to do is to obviously create the structure of our class. So I'm going to go ahead and create my class, which is user. I'm going to call this or have it decodable. And now I'm going to go ahead and define some properties of my user class. Like one of the properties can be int. The other can be name. And then we have username. And then we have email. You can see that I am mapping these properties. One of the things you will note is that username over here is all lowercase. But over here, the one that I'm using in my user structure, this is camel casing. Now I also need to map my address. Now, instead of creating a separate structure, a nested structure, I want this to be all a flat model. And that is why I am just typing it out in the user structure. So let's go ahead and do that. City and then finally zip code. Once again, zip code, as you can see, is camel casing over here. But over here in the actual JSON, it is all small. All right. OK, so what do we do or how do we go from here to mapping all of this JSON into this user flat structure or a flat model. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create some coding keys and specify that which property in my model is mapping to which JSON property or the attribute. So I'm going to go ahead and create a private enum. I'm going to call this user keys, which will be of type string and coding key. Now inside this, I have to add all the different attributes or properties that I want to map. And you can see the ID and name doesn't really map to anything, but I still have to specify. Username is the only one in the user keys that is changed. I'm mapping to username, which is the camel case, to the username, which is all lowercase, which is coming from JSON. I'm going to go ahead and add some other properties like email and address also. Now, I don't really have anything for address. So instead of uh, mapping it or creating a nested structure, which I don't want to do, I'm going to go ahead and first map my enum for address keys also. So address keys, which is string and coding key. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and add the street and suite and city. Zip code is the only one which is different of camel casing. And we're going to just specify that zip code belongs to the zip code coming from the JSON. And now the fun part becomes how should we map all of these things to a user model? So in order to do that, we have to create or we have to have a uh, overwrite the default initializer, which is the init. It's going to take in the decoder and it can actually throw an exception. I'm going to make this required so that we have to initialize it. OK, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the container. So first of all, I'm going to get the user container try with a or optional decoder.container. And I'm going to get the container using the keys, which is user keys.self. This is going to give me the user container, which will contain all the properties of the user, which means it will have the ID, name, username, and email. And I can actually start mapping this. So actually, you don't really need required because we're not really using a class. That's fine. OK, so I'm going to start with ID, try, and then uh, user container.decode. The type is int. 
and it is going to be mapped to something which is ID. Perfect. Now I can copy this and start pasting it and changing the property names. So the second one is name and it will be of type string and the uh, name of the enum key is name. The third one will come out to be the user name property and we are going to start mapping with string.self and it is dot user name. And then finally email which will be also string and the property name or the coding keys in this case is again email. So we have already done that but we also want to map all of the street, suite, city and zip code. And that is where we can actually use a nested container. So we can actually go ahead and say the address container, give me the address container, which is part of the user container dot nested container. And the keys that I'm gonna give is the, uh, let me actually go ahead and do it because we use the wrong one. It's the nested container, which is this one. And the coding keys is address keys dot self and the property is address, which is what we declared over uh, here somewhere. Here it is, on line number 39. Okay, so now we're gonna get the values out for the street and the suite and the city and the zip code, just like we have done for the user property. So let's go ahead and do that. Self dot street equals to, and we are going to get it try address container dot decode and we are going to decode a particular type which is string dot self and then street all right and now i can copy this and repeat the same process for suite suite is also string that's fine and it will map to a property call or coding key called suite next up is the city and it will map to city the only is the different is a zip code because the property name is camel case zip code and the key is zip code. All right, and uh, that's actually pretty much it. That's how you will map your um, properties. So one of the things that you can see is complaining about is that we are returning from initializer without initializing all the stored process properties because it really depends on these conditions that we have and if these conditions fail for some reason then those things are not initialized. Now there are a couple of ways to fix this. The easiest one would be to change them to var and give them some sort of a properties. So if I go ahead and change some of these to var and for integer or the ID I can actually make them optional. You can also make them optional if you want to or assign it with some sort of introductory properties. All right so we're just going to assign it to whatever, like nil or something or empty string, all right? So now if I go ahead and run this, it should be fine at this point. Well, the only other thing that we need to do is we need to actually go ahead and also obviously change this to var. Everything should be var because we will be setting it out later on. The final thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and display this or set these things, all right? So if let if let user equals to json decoder dot decode user dot self with the data, which in this case is json data. And now we can go ahead and print out these properties. So I'm gonna just print out a couple of these different properties like user dot name is fine. And I can also print out maybe user dot email, but I also want to print out the nested properties to see if these are or the flattened out properties to make sure that they are actually working correctly or not. All right, so now if I run this, you can see that we get the object which is nested. So if I go ahead and actually print out user over here, you can see that now we have a user object which has a name, username, email, street. So everything is actually mapped so what we have done is we have taken a nested JSON structure and we have mapped it to a flat model for the user, all right? So that is what we have achieved in this particular video and I, and I really hope that you have liked this video. If you want to learn more about 
JSON parsing and Swift 4, then go ahead and check out my course, The Complete Guide to JSON Parsing Using Swift 4 on Udemy. Now, this course goes through a lot more stuff about beginning, intermediate, advanced level parsing, and also consuming JSON Web API, as you can see. All right, so this will cover most or pretty much all of the cases you can imagine that you will be handling from different web APIs when you receive JSON and you have to parse it to a particular model. You can find the link to the course in the description and when you click on the link, it's automatically going to apply a great coupon code and even give you a less price. So that's pretty much it. If you like my videos, thank you so much. Your comments are always appreciated and uh, stay tuned for next week. Thank you so much.